chapter 30. For this commandment which I command you this day is not too mysterious for you. Hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Many people make the word of God mysterious. Hmm. Like spooky. And it, it 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 has no effect. You try to you try to frame the word of God from your own context, from your interpretation. You don't you don't seek God for truth, for for revelation, for understanding. You know when the when the chief desire of Paul. When he prayed, especially for the Ephesians, but really he's praying to the church in general, that the eyes of our understanding would be open. Mm -hmm. That we would know, that we would see what is what is the like the depth or the I would say the seriousness mm -hmm. or the goodness of salvation. That we may know God. Let's look at it. It's, it's from the Ephesian. Hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians 1. Chapter 1. Ephesians 1 15. Okay. Therefore, I also, after I had heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you. See that? Making mention of you in my praise. That's what he was talking about. He would he would constantly make mention of the Ephesian church in his praise. Like we make mention to God about each other. That's right. Right? We pray for each other. That's right. Even for our enemies. Jesus said, yeah, in fact, Jesus made a commandment, he said, Pray for our enemies. Pray for your even your enemies. Yes, pray for those that despitefully use your persecute you. See, but but Paul is speaking specifically to the believers here. He said, "I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my praise, that the, that the God, see, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, God, the Father of glory, who is the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation." In the knowledge of him. See that? Hmm. The eyes of your understanding. Being enlightened. That you may know. What is the hope of his calling. And what are the riches of. The glory. Of his inheritance. In the saints. And what is the exceeding grace of his power. Towards us who believe. According to the working of his mighty power. Which he were. In Christ Jesus, when he raised him from the dead. We're going to stop there. We're going to continue, but we're going to stop there. See? Zeal, according to knowledge. Wisdom, according to knowledge of the word of God. Righteousness that comes through the knowledge of faith in the word of God. The eyes of our understanding being enlightened. We know, we can see, be illuminated. The, the, the Lord of glory will flood our hearts. See? With His glory. Would flood our hearts with His truth. Would flood our heart with His grace. Would flood our heart with His mercy. When God does that, the eyes of our understanding will be open. Because now we can see and know what God does. Who God is. What he desires, what he wants, what he expects from us. We don't walk blindly now. We're not led astray. God has come that we might have life. Choose life that you may live. He come to give us that life. His life. A life of holiness. A life of reverence. A life of obedience, a life of love and fellowship and communion. 
Hallelujah. Amen. So let's look at John 11.25. That was just to show you that. The Holy Spirit does flood your mind. And it gives you understanding of the word. That's why he says it's not mysterious. The word of God is not mysterious. It can be known. It has been given unto us to understand the mysteries of God. Before the word of God was a mystery. It, it was hidden. But in these last days, God has spoken to us in his son. He has revealed truth to us. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life. The Holy Spirit came to illuminate us. To fill us, infuse our hearts with himself. With the word of truth. You know, you know the Holy Spirit is the word of truth? And he, uh, what do we speak? It's the word of faith we speak, right? That's right. So what are we really doing? We're speaking about the Holy Spirit. That's right. His truth. His truth. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The Holy Spirit comes to speak the word of God. Not only speak it, but in impart it. You know, you know, listen to me, Pastor Peter, carefully. You know, it, Moses says, the word that a faith we speak, where is it? It's in our mouth, That's right. in our hearts. That's right. mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is one that's writing the word of God in your heart. That's right. You're hearing the word of God. Mm -hmm. Your faith is growing. Mm -hmm. When you hear, what do you think the Holy Spirit does with that word? He writes it into your mind, into your intellect. You, when you say the heart, it's not this heart. It's talking about the mind. That's right. Your reasoning faculties. That's right. See? It's writing it there. Mm -hmm. So now, it's also putting it into your memory. Mm -hmm. Remember, the, the, the mind, mm -hmm. reason, Memory, imagination. That's right. The Holy Spirit is writing it in those faculties. Storing it. Storing it. Right. So you can quote it. That's right. So you can remember it. That's right. So you can draw it forth when you need it. So you can speak it forth when it's needed to be spoken. That's where you can testify. What do you talk about? You don't talk about money, God, God bless you with the house and the land. That's foolishness. Listen, God, God, God didn't come to bless you with no house and land. He don't, he don't even die to do that. You think he just died to give you a house? No. No soul. A wife? No. He said, hey, come on, you might have spiritual life. 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 What is life? And this is life eternal that you may know yeah. him, him, God, as the only true God. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ, his son, whom he has yeah. sent. That is life. Everybody's gonna live on, on this earth until the allotted time is past, it's over. You're gonna get food, you can get clothing. Some will get more than others. Through lust, greed, whatever. Maybe God can impart it to you directly or indirectly. But that's not his main objective. The life that we live in the flesh, we live by the grace of the Son of God who loved us and he gave himself for us. What God has for us. Brother, eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard what God has in store for us. But he said what? But he has revealed it. Because it's spiritual. The words he speak, they are spirit and they are life. He has revealed it by his word, by the Holy Spirit. When we get to heaven, the blessing that God has in store for us, nothing on earth can, can be matched or compared oh, to it. No. Nothing. This is just like a, a glimpse, a foretaste. What God has for us is, is, is beyond imagination. Because it's, it's going to be perfect, it's going to be holy, it's going to be righteous, it's going to be everlasting. There is nothing that on earth of itself that will last forever. I, quali I qualify that statement because we are still on earth, humans, believers, right? So we will last forever. We will live forever. So that's why I qualify it. But but nothing in the material world will live or last or remain forever. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But the way. But the word of God will not. Hallelujah. And where is the word of God, brother? Jesus. Where is it? It's in my heart. It's in your heart. It's my heart. See? It's in your heart. mouth, right? So that will not pass away. So therefore, if that doesn't pass away, you cannot pass away. At all. Hallelujah. You will live forever. 
See? I have come that you might have life. And have you the words I speak unto you, they are spirit okay. and they are life. Oh, yeah. The words I speak unto you, the believer, the one that accepts it, the one that walks in it, in his spirit and his life. It goes up as a witness. It will not return to God void. Hmm. So let's go for the John 11.25. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Oh. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never lie. Answer, shall never die. Right. Well, it's not lie, die. Do you believe this? I am. Choose life. Hmm. If you want true life, you must choose Christ. Amen. Praise his life. If you live and you believe in him, you will not die. And it simply means you will not die spiritually. You will not die eternally. And if you die, right, you shall live again. Job asked a question. If a man die, shall he live again? That's right. He had the answer. Because he says, I know my Redeemer liveth. Mm -hmm. See? That's a, that's a secret. My Redeemer lives. Mm -hmm. And because he lives, ah, I will live also. That's right. See? Mm -hmm. I die now in the flesh. Mm -hmm. I, died, I died to sin. I died to unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. But I'm alive to holiness Righteous. and righteousness. See? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a transition. That's right. He brought little darkness into his marvelous life. Hallelujah! Amen. See? He gave me life and peace and joy. So now that's why I say choose life. See? The choice, the choice had been made for me already anyway. You know, God made a choice for me. He chose me. Amen. And because he chose me, he called me. Mm -hmm. Because he called me, he justified me. Mm -hmm. Because he justified me, he will glorify me. But you see now, I must be made aware that God made choice of me. So that's where the preaching of the gospel comes into play now. So we preach and tell people that you must be reconciled to God. You, you spoke about it last week. That's right. Reconciliation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, from verse 17 up. See? The word of faith that we preach is this. Be reconciled to God. <laughs> God himself sent his son to reconcile us back to him. That's the message. So since God has reconciled us through his son to himself, we must now be reconciled to him. And the Holy Spirit is the one that brings you the word of reconciliation to us through the word. Be reconciled. We are Christ's ambassadors. We are the ones that are preaching the message of reconciliation. Peace with God. The gospel of peace. Hallelujah. Amen. So you say, I am the resurrection of life. Hallelujah. Amen. He, that, who, he, 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 anyone, the one, or basically it says, the one who believes in me, though he may die. Now when he said die, now he's talking about physical. Yet he will live spiritually and also eternally. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Hey. This salvation is everlasting. It's eternal in nature. Mm. It, is, it is rooted in the eternal God. God is, look, simple fact. Because God is eternal, whatever he does is eternal in nature. Mm. When God purposes a thing, he looks at it from his own holiness, his own righteousness, his own infinite nature and being, his supremacy. So he looks at it from his eternal, his eternal nature. So if God is going to give you a gift, brother, it's going to last forever. Amen. Amen. A man does things according to his life, like his lifespan. Mm -hmm. So you, you will hear like the lifetime, or you will hear like you was given um, life in jail, mm -hmm. prison term. That's right. It's, it, it, it basically means that the life expectancy of a human being Whatever time it is, 50, 60, 70, 80 years, 
A man can only think about his lifespan. But God is eternal in nature. So when God speaks, he speaks about himself as the eternal being, the eternal one. So whatever he said is eternal in nature. That's it. You shall never die, brother. Amen. Amen. Christ is alive forevermore. Hmm. He said, I have the keys of death and hell. In my hands. I have power over death. That's right. I have power over life. I, I have power over death. I, I took the keys of death and hell away from Satan. That's right. See, Adam sold them out, like he gave them away to Satan mm, mm, by sin. Mm. Because of one man's sin, all were made what? Sinners. Sinners. Yes. And because of one man's sin, all were made dead. Uh, counted to be dead. Mm. Uh, given given the uh, um, pronouncement of death. But by one man obedience, oh, all Jesus. were made righteous. Hallelujah. All Hallelujah. of us can be made righteous. One man's all obedience. Of, all of us can be made holy. All of us can live forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's like Colossians chapter 3 verse 4. Hallelujah. Amen. The same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus is the same. Oh, okay, let's let let's let's read from verse one. Because now we talk about living now a holy life, not carnally, but we want to live the life that God expects from us. If you then, uh, if then you were raised with Christ, see that. So when He was resurrected, we were raised with Him. So if you, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on things on the earth. Mm -hmm. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Mm -hmm. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Mm -hmm. See? Set our affection on things above. Now, as I said, we don't have to go up to heaven to bring him down. Because he's in our hearts now, right? Mm -hmm. He came. You see, I like, I like, I like, I like this fact. And I like, I love what God did. And what, and what Christ did also. He came voluntary, brother. He came down voluntary to, for us. To be with us. To sacrifice us. To deliver us from sin. To offer up himself a ransom for men. He came down voluntarily. He gave up his life willingly and freely. So that is why salvation is free. Freely given. We can receive it freely. We don't have to pay any price for it. It's, it's, it's without price. It's priceless. But you don't have to pay one penny for it. You don't have to do anything for salvation. God gives it to you freely. All you have to do is receive it. Sit back and receive. You know what Jesus said? I didn't come to be served, but to serve. And the greatest sacrifice, sacrifice that he made was to give up his life. Hmm. There can be nothing more honorable than to be uh, 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 like a display of servanthood than what Jesus did by giving up his life. You remember the eternal God? The eternal, himself. eternal God himself. himself chose willingly and freely to become flesh and to dwell among us, to give up his life, to undertake and to undergo all the punishment and the wrath of his father for our sins. What a tremendous sacrifice. What a tremendous amount of love. Greater love have no man than this, that a man will lay down his life for his friends. So now that's why he says, when he is our life appears, we will also appear with him in glory. Amen. He is our life. Choose him. You want life? Hmm. This is life eternal. This is life. Knowing him. Knowing Jesus as Savior. There's no other name. There's no other way. Hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hmm. The thing about it, he's the same yesterday and today forever. He does not change. He cannot change. 
So God made covenant with Israel. But he also made covenant with us. The everlasting covenant. But if he, if he followed the obedient voice. Listen. You know, I keep saying that listen means to obey. Take heed. Take notice. Pay attention to. You know, we hear a lot of stuff and we don't, we don't pay attention to it. Because it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter to us. You know, like if you listen to the news today, you'll go crazy. A lot of fiction and, and um, made up stories. And you don't even listen to it. it. It just goes over your head. But not so with the word of God. He is a consuming fire. Mm. When he speak, listen. I love, I love God. There's, there's no, there's none, there's none, there's none like him. But if you, if you want this life, there's some steps you must take. When we say choose life, you have to make a decision. How are you going to walk? How are you going to order your life? Colossians 3.5, this is what it says. Very serious matter. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth. See that? Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. In which you yourself once walked, where you live in them. But now you yourselves are to put all of these off. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another. Since you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of of him who created him. Remember we said that. The Jews. They had. Righteousness. But not. What? According to knowledge. To knowledge. But now what it says here. What it says here. In verse 10. We have put on a new man. See. Who is renewed in what? Knowledge according to the image of him who created him. The new man in us have been created by the Holy Spirit. And we have knowledge according to faith. We have righteousness according to knowledge of him who created us. You see that? God has revealed himself to us. Amen. We plainly see his Righteousness. We see it. Not only see it, but we experience it. You see, seeing is one thing, but experiencing is another. I can see something from afar, but when it becomes personal, when it becomes intimate, when I have a, a, a like a, a a revelation and I and I and I utilize that same knowledge to ferment thoughts and habits in my daily life, it becomes personal. That's why I said, we walk by faith, not by sight. Because God has created this new image in us. Where there is neither Jew, weak nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all in all. The life that we live in the flesh must be after the character of this new man. We put out the old man and we take unto ourselves the image of God, the image of Christ. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, who are the elect? We are. Put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another. And forgiving one another, 
If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you so must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which also you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. In spiritual psalms and hymns and in spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father to him. Now that is the admonition we said we want to live, right? If you want to live, there are attitudes, behaviors, and the traits that God expects from us. Our life must portray godly traits. Humility, love, compassion. We do not lie, we do not steal. And we give honor to God, honor to who honor is due. And we, and, li and we live at peace with all name. That is our hope. That is our prayer for you this morning. Your life must be portray and depict what you believe. Not words only, but indeed in an action. And God will be pleased with us. We are here to please God, not to please man. We rather obey God than man. It doesn't mean that we are going to be disobedient to the laws of the land. But we put God first in our, our behavior and our attitude. In fact, when God, when, when God is in us, when the wisdom of God is in us, we operate in a way that is pleasing to both God and man. See, our actions are going to follow the law. Just laws. We're going to obey obedient to the law. We're going to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We're going to love God and we're going to serve Him truly and freely. So we're going to live a life that is going to exemplify what God has done for us. We're not going to be called uh, by our actions making ourselves the word I'm looking for is indecent or dishonorable before God no we're not we're going to stand fast in liberty we are Christ has made us free and we're not going to tangle ourselves again in the yoke of bondage so today life is knowing God Knowing Him, let's walk in faith. Let's be obedient. Amen. Let's trust Him. Let's rely upon Him. Let the Word of God come alive in our hearts. Let Him keep us. We ask Him for faith, for knowledge, for wisdom, for understanding, for patience, for help and strength. We ask for those things. We pray for those things. Let, he, let God come alive in you. May His power, abundant blessing keep you. Today, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.